time out to come to be with us in this anniversary for Fredericksburg, Newport News, and Portsmouth. Amen. It's a blessing. <laughs> we, we were blessed to finally find a local temple here for Portsmouth, Virginia. And I do pray, if it be the Lord's will, everything go right. We hope to be making settlement next month here in Portsmouth. That way, Portsmouth, I, I, I can get out of this Arabian night place. And <laughs> I, 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 I can get out of this Arabian night. God has been good to us. Time moves so fast when I think last week this time I was preaching in the Bahamas. We baptized about 33 in the name of Jesus Christ. And we also had another preacher come in and brought his church in from the island of St. Lucia. And God willing, we'll be over there next year. God be our helper. Yesterday, we talked to two Church of God in Christ preachers. They want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, what we're preaching, everybody got to obey. Everybody. Everybody. I don't care what church you're in, who's your pastor, who's the so-called founder. God only have one church. Amen. One standard, one rule. And the way church have gone now, hmm. If the Lord will come now, practically everything will be dumped in hell. Amen. Because what is called church today, that stuff is not church. Amen. Port Smith, Newport News, all the Tidewater area, y'all have a lot of churches. You know you do because some of y'all are members of them. <laughs> a whole lot of churches. And if all of the Tidewater area and all of America and the world was attached to it, would follow what the Bible said, mm -hmm. everybody would have the same thing. Yeah. I'm glad for the truth of God message because it is reaching people all around the world. And I'm hearing from people, whether it's from the Middle East, in the Asiatic world, we got to send ministers now to the Fiji Islands. It reached us from the Fiji Islands. They want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right over there in their China and Japan. We got a church and a congregation from the Philippines that reached it. The preacher said, please accept us to be a part of First Church. Well, we got to send our fact-finding team over there. Our fact-finding team is a group of ministers that I organize because I can't be everywhere. And I refuse to have men preaching something different from the apostles. I refuse. We have hundreds of ministers. But one thing we will not tolerate is deviation. Not deviation from Pastor Jenner, deviation from God. Huh? I wouldn't say, well, we can't, we can't deviate from Pastor Jen. I, you can't deviate from God. Because I'm not going to deviate from God. And I ain't going to tolerate nobody else deviating from God. So whether you're black, white, brown, yellow, red, or clear. Mm -hmm. uh, if I can see straight through you. God says, upon this rock I'll build... My church. My church. Not Geno Jennings' church. Not Bishop Lawson's church. Not Bishop Johnson's church. Not Bishop Bonner's church. Not Bishop Brooks' church. God's church. No man, I want you to get this hard head Paul Smith folk. No man is the founder of the church. And if you go to a church and the bishop got on there, founder, he lied. Can't have two founders of one church. 
If Jesus said upon this rock, I build my church, ask your bishop, where was he at when Jesus said that? Amen. These Johnny come lately Bible carrying things. Just ask your bishop. Hey, bishop. Jesus said upon this rock, I build my church. Were you there? He got to say no. Huh? Oh, yeah. Bible says you're baptized by one spirit into one body. So I'm warning every man everywhere. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how much money you have, the size, car. If you, listen, if your driver got to call you with a different area code. Yeah. And you sit in your, your back seat is way in Connecticut. <laughs> and the steering wheel is in Dallas. That's long, bro. <laughs> when the smoke clear, every church and preacher got to stand before God. That's what make me preach so hard. We're not on no salary. I'm not elected by the board of directors. I work. I got a job. I work in housing, real estate, tearing them up, putting them back on the market, sell them to devils. <laughs> Amen. I'm a working man, not on no payroll. So I preach free. And when you preach free like that, you ain't got worried about no one threatening you with a check. And your message is not dictated by members. And that's why the churches that many of you come from, a lot of you may wonder why that man won't stand up for the truth because the members dictate his pay. You buy your bishop his car. You pay his electric. You pay his gas. You pay his mortgage. You send his children to school. Well, if you do all that for your bishop, tell your bishop to pay your gas, pay your mortgage, buy you a car, and then send your old children to school. Yeah. Amen. All right, Wims, open your Bible anywhere and let's go to work. Down the book of Malachi, chapter 2. Follow me. Follow Ma me, you that are visiting tonight. Come Amen. out of your churches. Leave your church. Amen. I helped preachers. Uh, I had three preachers jump on me one night uh, on the phone. They, I guess they had a three way. Preacher said, Listen, Gino. <laughs> I laughed. He said, you need to stop telling people to leave their church. I said, why is that? He quote me the scripture to forsake not. To simmer yourselves together as a man of some is. He said, what you going to do with that scripture? I said, believe it. <laughs> I asked him one question. Did God ever attend for his people to go to a false church and be lied to? He said, no. I said, that's what I tell people to leave the churches. God have never, and I want you to get this, never. traditionalists. Mm -hmm. God have never started a Baptist religion, Pentecostal religion, non-denominational religion, never. Lutheran, never. Christian science, never. Mormon, never. Jehovah Witness, Amen. Islam, Amen. Apples and Stalics. Am I right? Amen. Read your Bible and stop giving these fellas your money. Amen. You go to church. It's is not an intelligent woman in the world going to buy a washing machine from a salesman without asking questions. When he throw that paper in her face, she want to know what the fine writing means. She don't want no sales pitch. This is what happened with religion. We have been on the receiving end of a sales pitch. We jumped, we shout, we ran around churches, we fell out, our eyes got all white. We fell between chairs. We fell over chairs. Old mothers came with sheets and covered us like we dead on arrival. Yeah. Now you listen to the old man. Preachers have came out and told you, you loose. <laughs> Amen. 
Preachers have to tell you the Lord spoke to him and told him there's $25,000 in the house. Yeah. The Lord only talked to these fellas around offering time. He don't, otherwise than that, they don't hear nothing that God got to say. You got one soul, ladies and gentlemen, just one. Just one soul. It ain't no black soul, it ain't no white soul, you just got a soul. What are you going to do with it? You're not too cute for the grave, and you're not too handsome for a coffin. I don't care how much money you got. When you die, you leave in the way you came. Amen. The Bible said, naked you came into the world. Didn't it say so? Amen. Naked, you shall return. Now, the way the devil have used men, mm -hmm. men try to make us believe right here is heaven. Amen. And practically all these denominations is following that same cheap preaching. The so-called apostolic churches are no better than nobody else. God have never sent men to teach you how to get rich. God sent men to teach you how to get it right. You want to know how to get rich? Go to business school. Go to college. Church is designed to prepare you for the coming of the Lord. Just like Noah was sent to prepare the ark for the saving of the house. Because churches have embarrassed God. The churches have embarrassed God. The preachers have let God down. Deacons, churchgoers, let God down. This is the way they have done. Some preachers, if they had a church about the size of this stage, some of them were strict, sound, wouldn't tolerate nothing. Then all of a sudden they move into a building that's about half of this size. Then they become semi-holy. <laughs> what you mean semi Slowly but surely, they're getting away from the Bible. Right, then all of a sudden they get a church, size of this room. Before you know it, over half of the Bible is thrown out. Right. Things that they did not believe or did not allow now come back in the church. And the Bible says if you build up again the things you destroy, you make yourself a transgressor. Which means this, if the preachers permit the same thing in the churches that he used to preach against years ago, that preacher become a sinner. He's a sinner. Years ago, they preach against divorce. Now they get a crowd of about 500. New revelation come with the crowd. And the reason why a lot of preachers allow it now because their sons got more than one wife. Daughters got more than one husband. And because they're too weak to stand up against their family, they just go along to get along. Yeah. It's time for God's people to wake up and stop being such scared cowards. Yeah. Just carrying the Bible, but don't want to stand for what's in there. Yeah. Either you're for God or you're against him. Yeah. Are you listening to the old troublemaker? Right. You're for God? Or you're against them. That's why God made me like I am. Amen. Amen. I'm not on no payroll. I'm not scared of nobody. nobody. If, if, listen, if a woman birthed a full grown man, <laughs> come out the womb, yes, sir. seven feet tall, 350 pounds with poppy eyes. <laughs> That's big. <laughs> when you come out the womb, you're going to have to crawl to that scripture. I want all of you to get this. You better give me, I believe, the book of Kings. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Lord told one of the kings mm -hmm. the condition of his house. Yeah. He wanted to get in order. Yeah. If I'm correct. Yeah. He told him, get thine house. Yes. 
In order. In order. Give me the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah chapter 38. Follow me. Isaiah chapter 38 and we're at verse 1. I want everybody to listen at this and you that are watching around the world. Mm -hmm. You that are here that believe you're tough. You're not. Yeah. You that believe that you don't have to be saved and you already saved and Pastor Jennings, I'm a born again Christian. All right, we're going to check that up with the Bible too. I'll check that out. We're going to check your so-called Christianity with the Bible. That's right. And brother, when the Bible talk, you better listen. That's right. I want everybody to follow me. Get this. Isaiah chapter 38 and we're at verse 1. All right. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Now Hezekiah was a righteous king. That's what you don't have many of today. Righteous preachers. Where the fear of God is in them. That's right. Many used to fear God until money puffed their pockets out. When they didn't have nothing, they feared God. Now they got money and mega churches. Fear of God gone. Preachers look more like pimps than preachers. Wives look more like prostitutes than holy sanctified women. Amen. Gay men all over the choir. Yes, sir. Amen. Lips shining like armor all on the tire. Yes, sir. Are you listening? That's yes, right. Preachers now have respect the person, yeah. church favorites, and the first favorites will be their family. That's right. That's why the father's the bishop. Wife, first lady, daughter, secretary, yes, sir. son is treasurer. Yes, sir. <laughs> you in a family business. Amen. You ain't in no church. Right. It's a family business. Right. I listen to the old man. Mm -hmm. Follow me. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And, and Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah the messenger. Mm -hmm. the, the son of Amos came unto him. And said what? And said unto him, Thus saith the Lord. You know, it's good to hear a word from the Lord. Yes, now, I want all of you to understand hmm. this scripture is not only for everybody in here, but the whole world. Right. This message is for the whole world. That's right. Get this. Thus saith the Lord. Thus. Say of the Lord, set thine house, set thine house in order. Why? For thou shalt die and not live. Hmm. What else? Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall. Now, God brought a message from his servant Isaiah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Set thine, thine house, house in order. What's going to happen to you? But thou shalt die and not live. This is a warning. That's right. Amen. To everybody here tonight Amen. and you that are watching around the world, Amen. this is a warning from God. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. Never mind having some preacher entertaining you with his hands over his ears grunting with the organ playing behind him. That's right. This message for him too. That's right. I don't care if you white of the whitest. Amen. Black, so black the only thing folks can see is your eyes and teeth. <laughs> Call you the shadow lord. <laughs> eh? Amen. The Holy Ghost said here. Th thus saith the Lord. Now, let's evaluate setting your house in order. Most preachers have preached from this scripture and narrow setting your house in order to your dwelling place, That's right. your address. That's, right. That's a very small understanding of setting your house in order. That's right. Setting your house in order is set you in order. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and at verse 1. 2 Corinthians 5 and 1 says. For we know. We know. That if our earthly house. If what? Our earthly house. If what? Our earthly house. 
This body right here Amen. is an earthly house. That's right. And that's the thing first that must be set in order is yourself. That's right. That's right. Think of it. Amen. Cigarette suckers, pipe smokers, Amen. beer guzzlers. Yeah. You that live together, not married. You that got your second wife. You that got your third husband. That's right. You that been ordained a junior bishop. That's like having a three dollar bill. Ain't no such thing as a junior bishop, junior pastor, junior deacon, junior elder. Listen, right. you're not even a junior devil. You just right. have the devil. Amen. You don't impress God because you're a pastor. No. Your ordination don't mean nothing. When your house is not in order, don't you know one of the qualifications of a preacher? It is written, if he cannot rule his own house, own house. how can he take care of the house of God? That's right. You can't rule your house. You should not be up here. Amen. Talk back to me. Amen. That's right. That's right. Strict old-fashioned preaching have left church. Amen. So now church is a party. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. That's right. Holy Ghost is talking to you tonight. For we know that if our earthly house. Go back to Isaiah. Back in Isaiah 38 and verse 1. I want you to get this. Thus saith the Lord. Who's talking? The Lord. No, Geno Jennings. Thus saith the Lord. I'm just your friendly neighborhood mailman. That's it. And Williams is holding my mail bag. Like mail bag. A lot of letters in there. Oh, yeah. No need to get mad at me. The Lord is talking. Thus saith the Lord. When that mailman man give you a phone bill for $5,000, don't go complaining. You shouldn't have been talking so much. <laughs> That's right. His job is just delivery. That's it. When we call your attention, this book is for every bishop, yeah. every pastor, and this is the way it's not being preached. If you go in church today, have you noticed most men, most bishops preach as if the word don't apply to them? That's true. Have you know that's the way they preach it now? Right. Nothing applies to them. That's right. That's Nothing. Right. Nothing. Or it take God, but this thing get the pulpit and everybody else. And now, O oh, ye priests, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, set thine house. I want to stay right there. Right there. Or oh, is your house in order tonight? Amen. If the Lord came tonight. Would you make it? No, sir. Think of it. You're speaking in tongue. Some of you are baptized right in the name of Jesus Christ. Could you be saved in the church you're in? Could you be saved in the type of church you're in? Could you be saved by all what you believe? Will your belief keep you out of the kingdom of God? Do you believe a lie? Are you taught the truth? And if you taught the truth, are you living by the truth you're taught? Preacher. Go ahead. Are you a preacher tonight? And if you claim you're a preacher, what kind? Who ordained you? Who gave them the right to ordain you? Who made you a preacher? What kind of title do you have? Where did it come from? What are you preaching? What authority are you representing? And where did you get your authority from? You apostolic? Go to the Bible. See, can you find any faith that's called apostolic? And see where you make the first resurrection with it. You Baptist? See where you find any faith called Baptist. See where you make the first resurrection with it. Don't bring me tradition. Don't talk to me about some famous bishop. Who's more famous than God? Who's talking here? Thus saith the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord is talking. Yeah. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Set thine house in order. For thus it's time for mm -hmm. us to do a personal investigation and evaluation. Because what's coming? For set thine house in order, for thou shalt die. And what? Not thou shalt die. And what? And not live. 
Everything in here, this is for you. You that are listening all around the world, every preacher, I don't care how big you are, this is for you. Thus saith the Lord. One day, your breath going to be sucked out of your body. While you're rolling that dice, while you're drinking that beer, while you're smoking that joint, while you're lighting that cigarette, yeah. while you're beating up that woman, yeah. while you're sodomizing some little boy, yeah. while you're getting your body changed into a woman and you know you're a man. Yeah. It, Talk back to yeah. me. Yeah. Death's going to visit you. Why that preacher giving you an artificial ordination yeah. and then giving you some unscriptural trial sermon. That's right. Who's talking? Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order. Now, the first thing that must be set right in your house is your roof. Are you listening? Let's just prepare. We got to repair our house. Now, this is your roof. And a lot of us have a leak here. When you get a lot of leakage in any house, it damages the interior. Are you, am I getting, are you getting what I'm telling you? The Bible says, my doctrine shall distill as the rain, as the dew upon the tender earth. Doctrine is teaching. If wrong teaching come in the roof of this house and it keep trickling, 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 eventually it's going to warp and damage our entire temple. Until God bring a preacher who's a carpenter working for a master builder. Now, the false prophets don't have the tools to fix our leak. They just do a past job. And a past job is so cheap, other lies keep slipping in there. Look at what's leaking in you and got you believing. You believe there's a trinity? Why? Your roof is damaged. You believe that God has women preachers? Why? Your roof is damaged. You believe you can divorce and remarry, that's why you trade husband and wives like you swap cars? Why? Roof is damaged. Some of you are white bigots. Why? Your roof is damaged. Some of you are black bigots. Your roof is damaged. And because there's a leak within your roof, your temple become warped. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, depending upon the amount of water damage in a property, the whole property may have to be totally gut out. If you've been in false teaching for years, you need to be totally gut out. We need a total overhaul. Because what we learned was lies. And you believe the preacher more than you believe the Bible. So you say, oh man, he preached a good message. Where did his message come from? Did his message come from paper or did it come from the book? Did he sit up all night to prepare a sermon? Or was the sermon already prepared because it's written? Right. If it's already written, you ain't got to prepare no sermon. Right. i never been to Bible college. Never. never took a Bible course since I've been born. Never had not one Bible course. But glory to God, I'll take the Bible and make you lick that stuff up. God knows. 
Are you listening? Thus saith the Lord. Who's talking? Thus saith the Lord. God don't care how cute you are. God don't care because your husband bought you a new set of pearl earrings. <laughs> diamond. I don't care if the diamond's so big. It's, it's bigger than this handkerchief. It blind pilots when they fly. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Thing. Yeah. And Mr. Thing. That's right. God going to snatch your breath from your body. That's right. You're going to drop wherever he chooses. That's right. Why are you knocking up that man that ain't your husband? You're going to drop and fall on him. Hallelujah. Why are you leaving church and driving around trying to pick up whores? Yes. Bishop, am I right? That's right. You're going to ride up in the alley to hide. Yes. And God's going to snatch your soul yes. and leave you sitting behind a Cadillac, dead with no God. Right. Your last act was to pick up a prostitute. Yeah. You know you're going to hell. God going to visit you. Yeah. While you're going to the 7-Eleven, that corner store, play that number. Yeah. And you are a child of God. You are a child of the devil. Yeah. That's right. Oh, Pastor Dennis, I'm ready to die because I wrote a will. Hmm. Are you that foolish? foolish? Are you that deceived by your father, the devil? Amen. You wrote a will, but you forgot God's will. That's right. You're writing a will, and God already have a real, a will written, written. that the whole world is ignoring. Right. Thus saith the Lord. Are you getting this? Hallelujah. This scripture takes all the arrogance yes, out of everybody yes, and make you realize yes, you have a date with death. Yes, everybody in here, yes, one day your mama gonna walk by you. It's true. One day your wife gonna walk by you. One day your husband, your son, your daughter gonna walk by you. Right. You gonna be laying there cold with your tongue stitched to your mouth. Yes, with no God. You die in a church that did not stand for what God stands for. You was more loyal to a bishop because he's your daddy. If your daddy don't stand with the Bible, your daddy is going to hell. God's church is not a family church. This ain't no family church. No special privileges for family. Family don't obey the Bible to the family that go to hell like anybody else. That's right. That's right. So, who is it then that got a monopoly mm. on eternal life? Many of you watched us over the air. Thousands, millions watch us over the air. Stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of thousands of letters coming every week. People write me from all around the world. Pastor Jennings, you changed my life. Yeah. Mm. I had one man wrote me and said his mother, his father was an atheist, his mother was a Catholic. He did not believe in God. He said, but when he ran it, the moment he made up in his mind that he gonna search out who God is, he said, somehow or another, I came up on his phone. Mm. He said, he never heard of me in his life. He said, he, I came up on his phone he went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the message for the last days. Amen. You churches have played. You had your fun. And you thought you was going to get into heaven because you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. And you go around bragging you born again and you save. Mm. You save? Mm. Let's talk about that. Save have a broader meaning than just baptism and Holy Ghost. You are saved 
to be saved. Let me repeat that again. You are saved to be saved. What do you mean? If I repent of my sins and go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ, which is what everybody got to do. Everybody in here that haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you're still a sinner. I don't care if you went to a preacher's church and held his hand and repeat a sinner's prayer. No such prayers in the Bible. Just leave that preacher hand alone and put your hand in your pocket. Right. You ain't never been saved since you came out of your mother's womb until you did it on Bible order. That's right. After you repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the presence of God or the power of God in man. That saved us from sin. But we can lose that salvation here. Wait a minute, Pastor Jesus, I thought once saved, always saved. Uh-huh. That's a lie. If that was true, I wouldn't be here. That's right. You mean to tell me, Pastor Jenny, one save, always save is not true? Your preacher lied to you. Lied to me. Let me show you in the Bible. Give me 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 15. I don't want you to take my word. If you watch the program, you know we build with Bible. That's right. Build with my Bible. God, man, I stay in that Bible like a bird in the nest. That's right. Eh? That's right. All right, Will, let's, I want to work on the one save, always save, because undoubtedly I got some of you here <laughs> who thought you got saved 15 years ago. You helped the hand of some manicured nail preacher who had a Jerry Curl hairdo, <laughs> and you, you may was sincere. And he said, well, if there's anybody who desired to come to Christ, anyone who desired to come to Christ, and you came up, you know, crying with your eyelash coming detached and your <laughs> mascara all over your face, amen, and, and you helped some fella's hand, hmm. and you didn't know what he was. That's right. That's right. You didn't know whether he was an alcoholic, a drunk, a drug dealer, or a homosexual. You just held some fella's hand. That's right. Look how careless you were. And then he said, repeat after me. Lord Jesus. How many can identify with this that done this? Raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. Come on now. I want to help you out. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> now, this is what they do. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. Wash me, cleanse me. White as snow. And then the preacher said, you saved my friend. You ain't no more saved than a duck can smoke a cigar. <laughs> you've been conned, you've been duped, you've been lied to. Think of it. A man going to tell you that you saved and got you doing something that Jesus didn't do? Think. When Jesus came to the river of Jordan, did he hold John the Baptist's hand and ask for Christ to come in his heart? Where do you get this man-made stuff from? It looked like salvation, but it ain't salvation. Like when I was a child in the 1970s, the old heads can bear witness, the two-door Cadillac El Dorado was long. So what a lot of guys did in the hood they took that grill off and put the Rolls Royce grill on it. So when the Eldorado come up the street, the kids be like, oh, that's a Rolls Royce. No, it ain't. It's a, just a Cadillac. It looked like it. Yeah. You've been kind. Yeah. That's why I preach so hard against false preachers. A lot of these fellas know they're lying to you, duking you, conning you. But they don't care as long as you keep shoveling out money. That's right. They don't care. That's right. You are no more saved at all. You've been a sinner all your life. You bow your head and raise your hands. You're not saved. Preacher told you join the church. You're not saved. Well, Pastor Dennis, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart and I am saved. No, you ain't. Bible ain't say you are saved. No. The Bible said, if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that he rose from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That means you got some more to do. That's right. if, if, if you put money in the bank, thou shalt get interest. That's right. You got to put it in there first. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. 
Follow me in your Bible. Second Chronicles chapter 15. I want this to be good for you that was taught once, save, always save. I'm going to debunk your pastor. Amen. I'm going to debunk him. I don't care if your pastor here tonight, I'm going to debunk you, Bishop. Hmm. Listen. Second Chronicles 15, we're starting at verse 1. Follow me. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. That's what's lacking today. Amen. Spirit of God ain't coming on these fellows today. No. Spirit of money come on them. <laughs> huh? Amen. Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and said, Hear, Hear ye me, Asa, and, and all Judah and Benjamin. What did he say? The Lord is with you. On what terms? While ye be with him. I want to show you this. This one save, always save, is just as a lie. A lie. Listen good. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. All right. And if ye seek him, if you seek him, he will be found of you. All right. But what? But but if ye forsake him. Uh oh. When you forsake something, you leave it. Correct. Amen. The Lord say, if you forsake him, what he, will he do? He will forsake you. You leave the Lord. God leaving you. That's right. So one save always save is an old classic lie. Oh yeah. You save playing the lottery. You save drinking whiskey. You save in the club. You save smoking cigarettes. Mm -hmm. You save two and three husbands. Mm -hmm. You save live together, not married. You save homosexual. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> what do homosexuality and Christ got in common? That's right. What? Nothing. What? Nothing. That's right. Thus. Saith, Thus saith the Lord. The Lord. Set thine house in order. One thing about the truth of God, this message is from God. Oh, yeah. Designed to get everybody house right if they simply obey it. That's it. My God, man, people was making their exodus out of these, out of these churches all around the world, like, like the church of Israel coming out of Egypt. Amen. Men, men is giving up their positions. Deacons is laying down their deaconship. Pastors is coming out of pulpits. Because when you stand before God, you ain't going to be able to tell God, I'm a bishop. He ain't impressed. No, no. That's right. He killed bishops. That's right. He killed elders. That's right. The Lord said, I kill. Mm -hmm. I make a life. That's right. I wound. I heal. Well, Pastor Jennings, I just don't think God would do that to me. I'm, I'm just too cute. <laughs> you was a cute liar. Amen. Worms waiting for you too, Miss Cutie. That's right. I don't care if you got more curves than Route 17 and 95 and 85. <laughs> Listen, I often say when that beautiful woman die or the one that believes she's beautiful, the worms don't be in the ground arguing with each other. <laughs> here's a woman die, believe she's God's gift to man. And here's another one, folks think she look like homemade soap. The worms don't be down there. Hey, yo, Ralph, what's up? We got another body here. All of a sudden, they go in the Oh, man, she fine. Oh, man, we can't bother her. Hey, yo, Jimmy, what? There's some ugly bro right under. Let's go there. No. Yeah. Beautiful woman. Beautiful woman. That mouth that another man tongue was in. Mm. Oh, drops open in that coffin. That's right. Filled with roaches and worms and mice. That's right. Rocks yeah. make a nest in your gut. My Lord. Gnaw on your bones. Yeah. Brother, that eye yeah. that winked at that woman. Yeah. Huh? Just winking. <laughs> Am I right, I said? Those eyes fall out. Preach it, preach it, Replaced with spiders, spiders and worms and all kind of insects. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't as cute as you thought. And you ain't as handsome as you feel. They can put on you all the a, a tailor made suit which is one of the dumbest things that anyone can do. Why would you take a corpse, put a tailor-made suit on it, alligator shoes, custom-made shirt, custom-made cufflinks, and a tie just to dump it in dirt? That's right. That's right. 
Am I making sense? I believe in doing that body the way they done Jesus. Because there ain't nobody better than Jesus. The Bible said in what was fulfilled, written of him, they wrapped them in fine linen and laid them in a sepulcher. Wrap your body in linen, put you in a casket, and put you in the ground. 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars for a casket? Think of it. Your children can use it. That's right. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. God willing, if I die, it ain't none of that stuff. No, no custom made coffin because we leave thousands. No, 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 no custom made coffin at all. Um, no, I'm not even, in, I'm not, not even in a suit. Nope. Don't wrap my body in linen from head to toe. That's the rule. Wrap my body from head to toe. Not my clothes, not a shirt, nothing. Wrap it from head to toe. Get a pine box and drop it in the ground and let the work of God go on. You are going to church, but you ain't making no preparations to meet God. That's where y'all made y'all mess. You go to church every week, and you're not making no preparations to meet God. And the only way to make preparations to meet God is if you're taught the right thing. That's right. That's right. Because you go to church and jump and shout, that don't mean you're ready to meet God. I came up in the hood, you know, and sometimes we'll mix it up. Oh, yes, sir. And there was times that fellas wasn't ready to mix it up. No, sir. That's right. They sell wolf tickets, though, out there talking. Yeah, yeah, you come on. Yeah, you come on. And then an old head would just come on out walking, taking his time, strolling. He'd be like, Yo, you calling one of us out. He <laughs> always grinning because he know he can back up his goods. And that fellow wolf ticket, yeah, come on. Old head is like, all right, come on. Throw it your best. He's just as laid back. The young one just jumping around like bees. <laughs> Swinging all wild. Oh, here, just. That's all you got? To that young fact, swing wild. Oh, here, sidestepping. Mm. Before you know it, huh. the young boy, he's out, gone. <laughs> you're going to church, but you're not stopping and thinking, is this teaching that I'm getting, is it going to get me in the first resurrection? That's it. Teaching does two things. Save you or damn you. Are you getting the sincerity of this? Amen. Teaching does two things. Save you or damn you. That's right. God letting you know he's closing in on you, brother yeah. and sister. Yeah. Your body ain't the same. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Your heartbeat have changed. Amen. Vision changed. Right. Getting pains where you never had. Yeah. That's right. Death anger's ready for you, but the Lord said, no, just hold up, hold up. Hold up, just wait. Wait. Go ahead. Want me to wait for Lord? I, I got to give him a hard time. Amen. But they doing what I want them to do, Lord. He's smoking, he's drinking, he's lying, she's dying her hair, she's out there living like a fool. Why you want to be so merciful, Lord? I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. That's right. You think you get to your 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s by luck? Mm. You think you reach those years by luck? It's an act of mercy and an extension of God's mercy. Just giving you time to run to him or if need be, crawl to him. That's right. You're 65, 70, 75 years old. And instead of thanking God about repenting of your sins, being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, besides being on your 65-year-old knees calling God for the Holy Ghost, you'd rather go out and party and get a drink. 
You'd rather go out and party with your old friends that smoke and lie. You'd rather go out to a club and look at some half naked pervert with gold draws, shake his anatomy in your face. That's right. Instead of walk with God and woman, you'd rather go to a club and see some man come out of a cake yeah. and shake his anatomy in your face. Oh, yeah. Instead of walk with God, fella, you'd rather go to a club yeah. and look at a woman slide down a pole yeah. and you go home broke. Yeah. Am I right, I said? Yeah. Can't buy your children no milk. Can't buy your children no food. Can't even pay your mortgage. All a woman did was slid down the pole. Hmm. Walk down the aisle. Breast half hanging out. Backside showing. That's right. And you made it rain. <laughs> and you broke. Amen. Why well, use a club fool? That's right. That's right. Look at all the years you wasted. Look at all the years you played. And then when you die, a sinner posing as a preacher hmm. will lie to, lie to your family. Well, Brother Brown is laying here. And uh, he put his preacher's voice on. And uh, Brother Brown. Mm, Brother Brown. Brother Brown, he... I saw him about to, he's about to breathe deep now. <laughs> about to go up there with his mother. <laughs> I see him. I see Brother Brown right now standing yeah. with his father. I mean, just stand there and lie. 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 And family sit there, oh, praise him, Jesus. You know the way the old mothers do, they always rub them arms, you know. Oh, praise him. Brown is on his way to hell. Amen. Amen. Call a spade a spade. You don't preach to make people feel good. You don't preach so people can love you. I don't care who hate me. Long as I earn the love and the respect from God. That's it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's it. That's it. That's it. I don't care if no one loves me walking the earth. If I got the love of heaven, who can love me more than him? Who can love me stronger than him? Who can love me better than him? Not only that, with God, I never have to be tricked. And I will never be betrayed. That's right. I would say, God, hallelujah. God is faithful. Look at yourself, young man. Look at you. You go to church on Sunday, big deal. Look at you. Still shoot pool, still party. Some of you come here because a lot of you never saw the preacher in person that you see on television. That's right. And I know the message on television has hit you right in your heart. Yes. On television, you've been told about your wrongs. Yes, sir. On television, that message, you see, these preachers don't, they, they message like this. Stop your wrong, stop it. You better stop, boy. Stop it. That's right. Holiness. Yeah. 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 Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's why you get mad at me. That's right. You sit and watch the telecast. Preach it, man. And open up a can of beer. Preach it. You will drop that beer when you fear God. That's right. You lay there next to a man that you're married to the second time. That's right. You lay, you, you lay in there next to Melvin. And you know Freddie's still living. Yeah. Your first husband. And when that word is preached, you look at Melvin. And Melvin look at you. He's talking about that adultery again. Turn him off, Melvin. Turn him off. Melvin, turn him off. You know, he was doing, I ain't giving you up. 
Look at what we got. We got a house together. <laughs> she don't even say we got a house together. We got a house together. <laughs> No, we got cars, we got bank accounts, we got children. What, what, what you, he expect for me to leave you? Stay there and go to hell. Yeah. Cause that's what's gonna happen. That's right. I didn't write the book. That's God right. said he hate divorce. Hate divorce. Right. And if God said he hate it, and your pastor promoted, your pastor is a sinner. Jesus. You bear in mind, nobody will make the first resurrection, if the Lord come and find you in a second marriage, That's right. and your first wife and your first husband is still living, Amen. you will never get into the kingdom of God at all. At all. You follow these flesh-loving preachers go ahead. because they pacify you in your sins, Amen. and you go to some fake church on Sunday so you can feel like you're doing something. Then a choir started singing, going up yonder, and you said, oh, that moved me. <laughs> I felt something. Oh, something. It is common to feel emotional when someone sang. That's right. Someone can get up and sing the blues and make you cry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Somebody can sing the blues and make you cry. You can put on an old record of Billie Holiday, singing about strange fruit. Yeah. You'd be like, man, wow. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Better get myself together. Okay. It is common Hallelujah. for the body to be emotional when we are moved by a song. That's right. Just like it is common for men and women to rebel when they hear the word of God. That's right. Now you can hate this type of in your face preaching all you want. You're still gonna die. Oh yeah. Thus, thus saith the Lord. Think of it. Amen. I don't care how cute and how handsome you think you are. One thing about God, He'll end your marriage. Hmm. He'll end your relationship. Yes, he will. He don't care how much you hug that man, hug that woman. When death come, God say, take him. That's right. That's right. Hmm. She's on the bus. Take her. That's right. She's in there cooking. Take her right now. <laughs> Spatula fall. Frying pan hit the ground. He's on a job. Take him. He's a construction worker. He fall all the way down. He's already dead before he hit the bottom. He go in the operating room. Take the doctor who's performing surgery. Kill him. Kill him. Kill the doctor. I let the patient live. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Ah! Doctor just got started on your heart. Uh -huh. God said, you've been around long enough. I'm going to take you. I heal the heart and let her walk out. Mm. Hallelujah. You running around here like there is no God. Hiding behind some hypocrite in religion that you think is called Christianity. You ain't never served God since you've been born. Until you do it according to God's everlasting word. That's right. I can't help but preach like this because there's a woe behind me. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Amen. I was made a minister and was made by hands of heaven. That's right. And a man under the sun going to preach like this unless God make him. That's right. You look at what's on social media or on television or radio now, these men justify every piece of trash. Out here, the Amen. way they got it, it's no sin being a sinner. Yeah. Who's talking? Give chapter and verse again. Still, Everybody all right? Yeah. Don't lie now. Amen. Still in Isaiah chapter 38 and at verse 1. All of you that are here, I don't care what church you go to, leave it. Leave it. Leave these churches down here. Leave them. Amen. Amen. They right. went cold. The so-called apostolics don't went cold. Oh, That's right. What happened? What, what, what makes them go cold? The Bible says, when iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax how? Oh. When sin take over church, the word of God becomes less and less mm -hmm. and less and less. So what happened is now the preacher started justifying the sin yeah. because he's afraid to lose members. 
And things he used to preach against, people would be like, well, Bishop, Bishop, wait a minute. I thought, you know, I thought women was not supposed to preach. Well, you know, I see how the Lord is using my wife, so mm. and if my wife can do it, all of y'all can do it. That's, right. That's true. That's true. And this is what most bishops do before they die. They ain't looking at whether someone is qualified to lead the people. Only thing they looking at, who's my flesh and blood. So they groom son. They don't care if son is a baby maker. They don't care if he smoke weed. They don't care if he drunk. They are going to groom that son to take over his business. That's right. His business is his church. They keep the money in the family. You in these churches play organs and drums and guitars and soloists and all this other stuff with no God. Amen. This is the last days. And in the last days, the message is warning to the people, not fun for the people. That's right. They want to go to churches where they can have a Christian cruise where all the so-called saved women can walk around, save men in bikinis. Amen. Am I right? Amen. You got to be out your mind. What in the world was a Christian woman doing out in public with your behind hanging out, out, out. all your thighs showing, and your breasts hanging out to my you saved? Saved from what? That's right. If you had any morals and decency and still was a sinner, you don't come out in public like that. That's right. That's right. Church is sponsor cruises. Yeah. Men got on tight bathing suits yeah. and bare chested and bare legged, walking on the deck with the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> now that woman looking at you in all them tight shorts advertising your anatomy, she ain't thinking about Jesus. No. No more than you think about Jesus looking at her with all her goods manifest on deck. That's right. You know I'm telling the truth. When I came up, I was told the church is a light to the world. Church ain't no light to no world. World's a light to the church. You don't believe me? When the world came out with rapping, who doing it now? So-called church people. The rap came out with videos uh, just dim, uh, looking at our young women on these rap videos, yeah. just showing themselves. Yeah. So-called Christians doing it now. That's right. Aren't they? Amen. The music of the rapper and the music of the church, the same, even church now, you see them, somebody coming in. All right, come on. Put your hands together. Come on. Come on. Put your hands. And this was the church people. Church folks. That's true. And he's a rapper. What shall we say then? Shall we tell you to sin? That's that true. Grace may abound. God forbid. How shall we live the day at the sin? Live as long as they're in. Know ye not that so many of us was a bap, 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 baptized in Jesus. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. Am I right, man? Amen. Talk to me. Now, that's true. What happened is this. If you've been raised in a dirty house, being filthy is normal to you. And when you go to somebody's house that's clean, you're going to look at them like, wait a minute, what? Something wrong. So, if you've been misled for years, where church play has been going on for years, it seemed abnormal to you when someone speak against the criminal activity that you've been indulging in. That's right. That's right. That's right. When I came up, the old mothers of the church, man, if you was a young sister, hmm. your dress or skirt too short, if you was on the front row, that old mother either did two things, snatch you off of it, or threw a sheet or something over your legs. That's right. But now, Grandma! Grandma got her mini skirt up, swishing. 
Grandma got her ankle chain on. That's right. You didn't even wear an ankle chain when you was 19. Why would you wait till you get to your 60s and 70s and 80s and wear the label of a prostitute? Go ahead. What's the matter with you? Amen. Amen. You're the grandmother. You should be getting the ankle chains off your daughters. That's right. That's right. Am I right? Amen. You see why they hate Pastor Jennings? Thus said the Lord. Set thine house in order. Get your house right. Amen. Folks is praying, oh Lord, please make America better. America ain't going to get better because your house is in a mess. If you take a home that have discipline, a father and a mother who believe in raising their children with morals and ethics, teaching them self-respect, yes sir, yes ma'am, and you children, get this in your head. You under your parents' roof, you can't come in the house when you want to. No. You want to come in when you want, get out and get your own. That's right. That's right. Let me just tell you straight up. That's you right. can't get your own, shut up and come in when they say. That's true. You don't like it, that's your business. Amen. Now think of it. That's true. If kids lose respect for father and mother, mm-hmm. you're going to see that child, that son, jumped up in father's face. Yeah. Who you talking to? That's right. Get out of my face, old man. Why? He no longer have regard or respect or fear. She gonna roll her eyes at her mother. Oh, when her mother talk to her, she gonna start walking. And the mother gotta say, do you hear me talking to you? Now, see, when I came up, (laughs) when I came up, you couldn't even disrespect your parents in your dreams. You know, because somehow or another, they got in your dreams and whipped your tail. But look how society has gotten so backward. All right, years ago, if your child got wrong, your neighbor corrected. Today, your neighbor child can get wrong, and your neighbors don't want you to correct it. Because if you correct it, you may end up dead. That's right. Now, how can you correct your children if you in a mess? Amen. You can't reprimand your children from cussing. And you cuss them out. You're going to lay your son out for coming in drunk. And yet the first shot of beer was in your refrigerator. That's right. He learned how to cuss from his daddy. Your daughters shop around from boy to boy, from boy to boy, because mama got more men than ticks on a dog in her own house. Yeah. Am I right? That's right. That's right. Amen. Your daughters dress like prostitutes. Yeah. Because the mama out mama. there with a dress short as my jacket. That's right. With a split in that. Yeah. And here she is, the daughter, 10 years old, with something laced all up her thighs, lipstick on, earrings, rouge on her face, with a pocketbook looking like she's about 25. And here's your mama telling a 15-year-old daughter, my baby is growing up. Yeah. Do not... Prostitute. Let's read this. In the book of because Leviticus. A lot of folks say, you know what, Pastor Jennings, you know, I love your preaching, but sometimes your mouth is just too raw <laughs> and you shouldn't say some things. Amen. All right, let's get some Bible. In Leviticus chapter 19 and at verse 29. 19, 29. Not scared to stop market crash. Very good scripture. <laughs> That's right. Remember that. Think of it. Hmm. 1929. Leviticus. Mm-hmm. All right, follow me, you mothers. Follow me. Do not prostitute thy daughter. You old mothers may as well stop trying to be young. Face the fact. Yeah. You're a senior citizen. Act like it. That's right. Get them dresses down. Amen. Stop exposing your body. Yeah. And you men yeah. that's up in age yeah. and your wife is up in age with you, will you mind telling me why you so comfortable that your wife is out here half naked? Go ahead. 
Why you ain't got no shame that your wife ever ties her breasts Go ahead. to the neighborhood yeah. like she's Mr. Rogers? Right. And you want to fight everybody. Fight yourself. Amen. Grandma, you out here with ankle chains. Grandma, you out here with fake hair. Grandma, you out here with splits. Grandma, you out here sitting one leg east and one leg west. Yeah. Grandma, you out here smoking. You out here drunk walking down the street. Hey, 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 get out the way, grandma. Get that car. Go around me. Ain't no one out there. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. This is common sense preaching. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We get older and don't get better. Mm -mm. We drink so much, it changed the complexion of our skin, the color of our eyes, the pigmentation of your lips. You become slaves to liquor bottles. That's right. Slaves to cigarettes. Liquor become your plantation and tobacco become your master. Amen. Whether you black, white, brown, yellow, or red. Yeah. Amen. You a Christian? Why you got a bar in your house? Oh, yeah. It ain't no Christian Jack Daniels. You see, you, you, God sent me in the last days with this message to let the world know your going to church don't prove nothing to him. Amen. You're going to church don't prove nothing. You're going to church ain't doing nothing unless you come back to the Bible. That's it. Come on back to Bible. That's right. Come on back to Bible. Amen. You might as well get ready to come on back to Bible. You might as well get ready to do it. That slick haired reverend can say anything he want over you when you die. Mm -hmm. No preacher got the last say over you. That's right. God got the last oh, say over you. That's right. That's right. Listen at this. In Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Look at what the type of clothes you buy your daughter. Mm. You let her boyfriend spend the night over your house. Yeah. And your mama didn't even let you do that. That's right. You let all these makeup kits in the house and all these different color hairs. And, mm -hmm. and the parents are so backward now. If the son say, uh, Mama, Dad, I want to talk to you. You know what? <laughs> I'm in love. And his name. Mm. This is your son. son. Mm. This is your son. That's right. His, his, his name is Paul. Can I bring Paul over to the house? Yes, bring Paul over. Paul, when Paul come over. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Am I right, man? Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. Now, <laughs> and your mama and your daddy will agree with it and say, congratulations. What's wrong with you? Yeah. My Lord, no. You have wobbled in dirt so long. Until you call dirt clean and you call clean dirty. Yeah. Until now you say to each his own. God said. That's right. That's right. God said. Yeah. I made the woman yeah. for the man. Yeah. Did he say so? Yeah. What happened to your manhood, brother? God said, I made the man in my image. And if we are made in God's image, what is so feminine about God? That's right. That's right. God ain't feminine. No. Listen, the Bible said God have his way in the whirlwind. That whirlwind come tearing up everything. You don't see a whirlwind coming. <laughs> When they give it, when they, when they give it, they knock down the house. <laughs> Am I right, I say? Yeah. 
Go ahead, brother. What happened to you? What happened to you? What happened? What happened to your manhood? Yeah. Where's your guts, yeah. woman? Yeah. Mm. That you will settle for your son marrying another boy. Yeah. They can't produce no grandbaby. Go ahead. Talk to me. Preaching. And you said to each his own. They ain't no, this has got to do with God. Yeah. You have become so corrupt oh, yeah. and so weak yeah. and wallow in trash yeah. and religious filth and so long. So long. Now church is flying rainbow flags. Yeah. And you criticize the Catholics? Mm. Apostolics doing it too. Apostolics doing it, Methodists doing it, Christian Science doing it, Baptists, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Pentecostal. That's right. Men with men. Men with men. Men with men. Actors that are cross dressers sell their manhood so they can make $20 million from a movie. That's right. My dignity is more valuable than money. Amen. Amen. When I speak out against Tyler Perry and Ricky Smiley, mm. they say he's rich. Who cares? Who cares? Thus saith the Lord. The Lord. Set thy house in Set order. Thine house in order. For thou shalt die and not live. You let God care you while you got those let female clothes on. That's right. A real man ain't no cross dresser. No. Not a real man. Ain't no Christian dressing like a man and dressing like a woman. No. Imagine me coming here, my wife dressed hat and pocketbook and pumps. We're going to bring before you our brother, our leader, and our teacher, and our guide, our brother, Pastor Gino Jennings. And I just come up. One Lord, <laughs> one faith, <laughs> one baptism. One. Now you're looking at me like I lost my mind. Oh, yeah. That's all right, I say. That's right. You young men, yeah. what's wrong with you? You can't make up your mind whether you're a boy. Make up your mind. You don't know whether you're a boy? Go in the mirror and stand buck naked. Go ahead. <laughs> Hallelujah. Am I right, I say? Yeah. If you got a roll ball, go in front of the mirror and flash. Flash. You a boy! Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. I'm gonna make it so raw, you raw. got to understand. Churches is telling you it's all right. Politicians is telling you it's all right. Mayor is telling you it's all right. Governor is telling you it's all right. Children cartoons is telling you it's all right. God is still saying no. Amen. Preacher. So how can a man represent God and say yes when God said no? If God say no, I will die saying no. That's right. Go ahead. Well, Pastor Jenner, you sound like you don't love him. Oh, I love the person, but I hate the deed. That's right. If you got a son struck out on drugs, do you love your son? You love your son, don't you? But you don't love his deeds? That's right. That's right. You don't like when he's stealing your chickens? Huh. And they dead? Amen. Stealing your frozen chicken? Yeah. Stealing your soap? Stealing your toilet paper? <laughs> you love your son! That's right. But his deeds is wrong. That's it. That's it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Mm. So you fake churchgoers Go ahead, brother. who just carry the Bible. Don't you know the Bible is called a sword? Oh, yeah. Amen. How is it you ain't never cut? Hmm. Amen. Amen. Never. What kind of never. sword your preacher using? Huh. When I came up, my mama bought me a toy sword. I was out there like a three months of tears. <laughs> and when it will break, we'll get branches. Constantly going at it. That's right. 
These preachers ain't using the Bible now. No. They messages from a laptop. Yeah. Amen. They messages they written out all week now. Right. Right. And then give it a title. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> and you sit there. Go ahead, preacher. Go ahead. Go ahead. Listen to him talking. They, they just sitting there. Look at him talking about Mary. Look at him talking about Mary. Call you a nursery rhyme. Then the preacher make a sucker out of you. Take you back to kindergarten. Yes, he will. And then tell you over the television. You're not looking at me on television. Get a piece of paper and trace your hand. <laughs> trace your hand. Trace your hands. <laughs> he actually take you right back to arts and crafts. And you fall for it. That's right. Trace your hand. Trace your hand. My neighbor, my neighbor, my neighbor, my neighbor, my neighbor, my neighbor. Oh, you can sell it. My neighbor, trace your hand. Trace your hand. And you sitting there. Uh, Bill, you got some paper? I want to trace my hand. Look at you, look at you, look at me now. Trace your hand, trace your hand, trace your hand. And the Lord said, the Lord said, <laughs> what, what did you say, Lord? What did you say, Lord? Halala, shakalala, Peter, pack a pick a pepper. <laughs> after you trace your hand, then cut it out. Cut, cut it, it out. out. You know, it don't have to be perfect, just cut it out. And after you cut it out, you mail that cut out paper with to me, and I would lay my hand on it, and we would touch and agree. Touch and agree. Sucker. <laughs> That's right. He was a sucker. Amen. How many here is from the hood? Raise your hand. Don't you know a hustle when you see one? Hustle. Amen. Some of these preachers are the worst hustlers on it. That's why they're trying to get me off the air. Yeah. Do you know preachers have reached out to the FCC to ban me off of television all around the world? <laughs> oh, no. they, don't want, they don't want this message on the television. I, I'm like a pit bull. Yeah. So while the preachers are licking you, you a sinner. <laughs> you a sinner. You a, you a good sinner. We come along. <laughs> Sink the word of God right into you and rip that man britches that got that second wife and send him running down the street. Amen. Amen. You might as well come on back to the Bible. That's right. That's You're going right. to die one day, father, husband, brother, wife, sister. Daughter, grandma, you going to die. Amen. No sweet words a preacher say about you is going to get you in the kingdom of God. Amen. Even if you say you're a Christian, it ain't worth two cents. Amen. Because ain't nobody like Christ unless they do it on God's terms. That's right. Give chapter and verse again. Isaiah chapter 38 and at verse 1. I'm warning you. Thus saith the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. Set thine house in order. That's why, that's why we're here in Port Smith. Yeah. I'm, I want to warn the entire city, Let all the see. Tidewater area. Everybody in Tidewater area and around the world. That's right. All of you. Mm -hmm. Black, white, brown, yellow, green, purple. <laughs> you're going to meet God. Yeah. Hate me all you want. I don't care. You're still going to meet God. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yes. You fellows that got wives, you're supposed to be the head of your house. Mm Here -hmm. the word may be burning your wife up. Come on, honey, leave, leave, leave. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Weak man be like, all right, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I don't want anybody to look at us. Look, I don't like what he's saying. I ain't, I ain't, I don't look like no prostitute because I got my ankle chain on. You bought it. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't look holy at all. You're going to die one day. You're going to be a stiff, cold slab. And those lips that he used to massage with his mouth is going to be stitched closed. Those eyes that used to wink, you may die with them open. But you're going to be pushed into darkness. He's going to separate your spirit from your body and your spirit. According to Ecclesiastes, go back to God, and your body goes to dust. That's right. They can give you a so-called Christian celebration home going. Hmm. And let the all the choir sing, gone up yonder. Hmm. God is not impressed. No. Everybody under the sun must repent of your sins. Repent. Everybody. Everybody. Be baptized in water. Everybody. Everybody. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. If you ain't baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you're not saved, never been saved, still a sinner. Yeah. And I don't mean get baptized and then after you're baptized, you go back to your false church. You're still a go to hell with the baptism. That's right. Because the Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. Mm -hmm. You young men, 
It's time to get off the streets of Virginia. You out here living like a fool with your pants hanging down, advertising your underwear. For what? Got your pants no higher than your, your bottom of your backside. And then you put a belt on. Where's the logic? Amen. <laughs> Fathers are like this. Sons like this. Grandfather like this. Amen. You can see them in churches, choir rehearsal. Look like a bunch of hoodlums. Street That's true. thugs. That's true. In church, bare chested. In church. I'm sure. Amen. No standard. Mm -hmm. And these liars say, God ain't looking at your hour. God just look at the heart. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. If God ain't looking at your outward as well as the heart, why did God tell the man in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, it's shame for a man to have long hair? Hair is outward. Your heart don't have hair. That's right. Isaiah told Hezekiah, now let's think of it now. Isaiah. Nobody in here is a king. Hezekiah was a king. That shows you God ain't got no respect to person. No. <laughs> all right, now let's look at all of this quickly. Still in Isaiah chapter 38 and at verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick. Check, 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 brother Williams, Mike. All right, come on, son. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. All right. And I unto him uh -huh. and said unto him thus saith the Lord what set thine house in order this is for you are you going to obey this mm -hmm. or are you going to leave out and continue in your false church and continue in your sins right. time to set your house in order for thou and shalt it, die. Mm -hmm. it begins tonight yes, sir. Right. because some of you may not make it back tomorrow right. and some of you may not even make it to your doorstep That's true. but you heard this message That's right. You, you heard this message. Get mad if you please. It don't mean nothing. You heard this message. Human family. You heard this message. That's right. Preachers. That's telling folk you can divorce and you can remarry and all this stuff. There ain't nothing wrong with being a homosexual and God ain't looking at your hour. He gets looking at you. you. Talk all your foolish talk all you want. You all white churches and all black churches that think only white folk going to be in him. <laughs> and only black folk going to be in him. That's right. One thing about heaven that ain't going to be segregated. No. And you know one thing? I never saw not one, not one. I never heard of one prejudiced death angel. No. <laughs> no. Death angel don't come out of a white man when a black man walks by. Say, oh, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> Knock off the black man. No. <laughs> white man become pale. Black man become gray and ashy. Yeah. The death angel is hitting now while I'm talking. That's right. Or it take God, the only time he's going to retire is when the Lord put him at a hope. Amen. Until then, he got a mission that will take place up until the coming of the Lord. That's right. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to remain proud and arrogant? and self-willed and thank you somebody because you got a few thousand dollars in a bank account. You got your house paid off. Why you think like a fool? You, when you die, you ain't got no money. money. You ain't got no house. You ain't got no car. Nothing. Nothing. So why you think you got so much now? Will you please get it in your brain? Because one day your brain will stop. Yeah. And the doctor will cut open your cranium. Mm. Get a saw. Open your skull up. And you will lay there. Mm. Can't do nothing. Yeah. You got the, op the greatest, listen, this is the greatest opportunity since you've been born. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. To get right with God. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, I wasn't raised with that religion. Your religion ain't worth nothing. I'm trying to get you to pick up what God say. That's right. It ain't Pastor Jennings' religion. It's what God say. Amen. And God Almighty demands for you to be holy. Amen. 
Yeah. That's right. What did he say? Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Set thine house in order. All right. For thou shalt die and not live. All right, what happened? Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall. Glory to God. That message, man, that message stirred up Hezekiah. Yeah. He didn't go to the Lord. Well, wait a minute, Lord, I'm a king. What you talking about? Hmm. I rule kingdoms. Yeah. The kings of kings spoke here. That's right. He's bigger than Hezekiah. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Uh oh, I want all of y'all to pay attention. He prayed to the Lord and said, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee. Look at him. Going before God in humility. Yeah. Remember, Lord, I beseech you. How I have walked before thee in truth. Can you say that? Mm. Hallelujah. If you, want, if you want an extension, can you say that? Mm. Now you see what I'm talking? Mm. If you want an extension and want God to have mercy on you, can you say that? Remember now, oh Lord, you I You got a second you. wife and your first wife still living, you can't say that. No. You baptized Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you can't say that. No. You are Baptist, a Methodist, a Presbyterian, a Lutheran, a non-denominational, claim you some apostolic, you can't say that. No. Because the only way you can say you walk before him in truth is when you walk before him according to scripture. That's right. Whatever's in scripture, that's truth. Not what your pastor said. That's what right. God said. Yeah. That's right. Am I right? Yeah. Amen. I want to prepare you to meet God. That's it. That's my assignment. Prepare men and women to meet the Lord. That's it. What did he say? And said, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee. What is it? How I have walked before thee in truth. And? And with a perfect heart. And a complete heart. And have done that which is good in thy sight. No, I've done that which is good in the sight of my wife. And have done that which is good in thy sight. In the sight of my husband. Good in thy sight. And in, in the sight of bishop. In thy sight. You see? Let me get this to everybody that's here and everyone that's watching. Amen. I've been saying this moreover. Your loyalty must be towards God more than any organization in the world. That's right. Your loyalty towards God must exceed your loyalty to some church. Amen. I don't care if you hold a position. You mean to tell me you're scared to lose your position and you see your bishop lying to you? Mm. Oh, Pastor Jennings, you know, he ordained me. So what? <laughs> That's right. We're talking about life or death. Oh, yes. The Amen. Bible said, choose ye this day. Amen. Whom you going to serve? Oh, yeah. If God be God, serve him. Serve him. If Baal be God, serve him. Amen. We are determined yes, not to become what churches have become. That's right. Amen. <laughs> mm -mm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If a minister get up and preach something contrary to the Bible, I'm on, I'm on him. I mean, I, I'm on him with the nightstick of the scriptures. And if he can't accept correction, you're fired. I don't care how much of us in the spirit you are. If you up here preaching, and you just don't stop jerking. Lord said, Lord said, yeah! Mm -hmm. When you done, where did the Lord say that at? Where did the Lord say that at? I want answer. I don't want no tongues. Yeah. <laughs> not, not the size of a gnat's ankle will we tolerate deviation from God's word. Your soul is the most precious thing you have. If you lose that, you lost everything. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Listen. And have done that which is good in thy sight. Uh -huh. And Hezekiah wept sore. Oh. Yes, sir, he did. Notice he didn't go before God arrogant, no, no. proud, no. high-minded. No, no. This man humbled himself. He was a king at that. But he humbled himself. Yes, when you humble yourself, you ain't looking at the kind of car you drive. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You ain't too humble where you can't get on your knees. I got a Versace. Versace would be in hell along with anything else. I don't care if you got a Versace or a Houdini. Nobody care nothing about your name brand folly. I, I'm, I'm laboring to get people back to God. That's right. They mindset got to get the mindset of the old school. That's right. Huh? 
mindset got to come on to the old school. So you get these young folk. But this is the way I see it. Who cares about the way you see something? God said my thought is not your thought, neither is my way your way. Amen. Do you hear this? And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, After he prayed, after he cried and pleaded out to God, because God let him know, you're going to die. Not live. Get yourself right. Mm -hmm. Anything you're dealing with, get that right. That's right. And let it function under my guidelines and my law. That's it. <coughs> after he cried to the Lord. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah. The Lord came back and talked to Isaiah again. Saying, go and say to Hezekiah. What? Thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father. Uh -huh. I have heard thy prayer. Hey, hmm. if you're wrong tonight, do you want God to hear your prayer? Hear your prayer. If you know that if you die tonight, you are lost soul, would you not want God to give you a chance to get right? Wouldn't you? Amen. Glory to God. What did he say? I have heard thy prayer. I have heard your prayer. I have seen thy tears. I have seen your tears. Behold. Look, I will add unto thy days 15 years. I give you another chance. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is giving the world chance after chance Hallelujah. after chance. Yeah. Some of us sitting here have been shot, but you're still living. Shot again. Still living. Stabbed. Still living. OD'd. Still living. Drunk. And was in car accidents. Still living. That's right. Was in the operator room and had a flatliner. Boop. Still living. That's true. That's right. You made God promises. If you deliver me, I'll do this. God knew you wouldn't. But he had mercy on you anyway. Right. And you went right back out there bang, gang banging again. That's right. Amen. God, Amen. Is, God is more good to you than you are to yourself. Amen. Am I right, I said? Amen. Having this knowledge, why is it you find it so difficult to give your life to him? Amen. Listen, brother, you think it demean your manhood to bow to your Lord? To the Lord. Do you know God can make you bow? That's right. You walk around, I hear what you're saying, Pastor Jenny, but you ain't gonna never get me down no floor doing some praying. Lord, my Lord. The Lord say, I can't. All of a sudden, he run a pain through your heart, down your leg, down your arm, and take your breath. Not only are you on your knees, you're flat on your face. That's true. That's right. You ain't your own. You better get it in your head. You young, middle-aged, and old, you're going to die. You're going to be ushered in the morgue. Your body will be picked up by somebody. You will be rolled in some church. If you have not repented of your wickedness, what you mean, if you never were sorry and asked God to forgive you for your evil. Yeah. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, which is the commandment of God. And come out of these false churches. Mm. You will suffer a penalty for being arrogant, self-righteous in your religion, and burn in an everlasting hell. That's right. That's right. If anybody want to get right with God, I want to take advantage of the chance, like Hezekiah did. If you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and walk with the message of holiness, and be right with God, stand on your feet.
And if you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet. Come on, stand on your feet. If you want to get right with God, stand on your feet. Come on. Come on. Glory to God. You that are standing. You see that? You see that brother and sister, them signs over there say baptism? All of you go over there. All of you that are standing go over there. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. One gospel. I know some of you went to a Catholic church and been sprinkled. You ain't baptized. Sprinkling is not in the Bible. The Bible requires that your whole body be buried in water. You that was baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you're not baptized either. You are baptized wrong. Because Jesus said baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And when the preacher just takes you down in water and say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and don't call the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you still ain't baptized. That's right. I'm a father. I'm a son. I'm a husband. But my name is Genesis. God bears the title Father. That flesh bears the title Son. The Spirit bears the title Holy Ghost. What is his name? Jesus. Jesus. And he's the Christ. That's it. All of you that were baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you were baptized wrong. If you want to get baptized right, according to the Bible, stand on your feet. Because you've got to get it over again. Because if you die and ain't got it over, you're still lost. Anybody else want to be baptized? Look at that crowd just gathering up back there. Glory to God. <laughs> yeah. Repent! 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 Hallelujah. Now, make sure some of you brothers from Newport News go with Brother James to give him a hand. Make sure some of you brothers is going over there, several of you. If you, been, if you bow your head and raise your hand and tell me you accept Christ, you ain't saved. Bible ain't never said, bow your head and raise your hands. Amen. You are not saved. You held the preacher's hand and repeated the sinner's prayer. You're still not saved. Right. You've been conned. You've been duped. You've been lied to. Repent! Yeah. You might as well get ready to go over there and be baptized. Yeah. If you hear this message tonight and God snatch your soul, your husband can stand over you and cry and yell and the wife can say, oh, wake up, wait. You lost. lost. Come on back tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Don't you go to your church. Come on back at 11 o'clock for round two. May God bless you. May your understanding come open. Come out of the churches that you're in. And walk with the truth of God. Pray that everything go well. We're looking to make settlement. God willing for the new temple here in Port Smith. We already got one in Newport News. What's, what's, what's that address? On Camden Street. What is it, Brother Harvey? 1825. 1825. 1825 Camden Street, right? 1825 Camden Avenue. We're looking to make settlement. So all of my Newport News brothers and sisters... I'd rather uh, Port Smith, we want your cooperation. Question real quick, brother, so we can let you go. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay. I was, uh, like I said, I, I, I was uh, been thrown out of churches over the Newport News. All right. Uh, I used to go around and run revivals and do gospel <coughs> concerts, making money, 
Mm-hmm. Let's get to the point because we, we're dealing with time. Let's get to the point. Well, I know the Bible said, Woe unto the pastor that scattered the flock. So just get to the point. Yes. Right. Right. For one is your master, even Christ. Yes. Really? Yes. Why? And because you proclaim yourself to be pastor. Yes. Don't you know that if you call yourself pastor, uh -huh. you're calling yourself Christ. Yeah. Hold that thought. Hold, hold it right there. Let me help you. Would you let me help you? Yes. All right. I'm going to help you. Okay. All right. All right. I, I, I want to remind you all that clocks go back one hour tonight. Don't forget that. All right. And we can get on back here on time on tomorrow. <laughs> now, let me. What's your name, brother? Brother Armstrong, let me help you. Okay. No. By a man being called pastor, he's not calling himself Christ. Because I'm going to show you who put that in the church. Let me show you this. In the, book, right. in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Let me help you. Ephesians chapter 4 and at verse 11. Listen good. And he gave some apostles. And God. Some, this is talking about what God done. He gave some apostles. And some prophets. Some prophets. And some evangelists. Some evangelists. Evangelists. More than one. No, 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 go, go back and begin at the beginning again. And he gave some apostles. Plural. Right. That's, that's talking about men. Right. Because Christ is no plural to him. All right? And some prophets. Oh, men that got that title. What else? And some evangelists. Men that got that title. What else? And some pastors. That's men. <laughs> Hold it. Let's respond to it. That was not given by Paul. It was given by Paul. No, it wasn't. Let, let, me, let me educate you again. Let, let me help you. some secret place, Jesus gave Paul the authority to change that command. He didn't change it. He did change it. No, he didn't. Let, let, listen. Brother Armstrong, let, let me help you. Brother Armstrong, let me help you. Listen. Let me help you, brother. Listen. Paul got his message from God. Amen. Let's read that real quick, son. That's show me what Paul got it. Give me the first chapter of the book of Corinthians. Chapter 1, begin at verse 1. Don't First be too slow on chapter 1 and at verse 1. Let me show you where Paul got his information from. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul was called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Through the will of God. He spoke by God's will. And Sosthenes, our brother. Now, everything that Paul preached was from God's will. The word pastor simply means shepherd. Jesus came here and had the title apostle. He also was called minister. He also was called chief shepherd and bishop of our souls. He also was called prophet because the Bible said God can raise him a prophet like me. Him shall you hear in all things. So Jesus was the first one to have these titles. So when he had these titles, he died and then brought those titles and left them in the church and made man to fulfill those titles that he first wore. That's right. Do you get what I'm telling you? Yeah. Huh? So, yeah, you close out with one rebuttal. Go ahead. Yeah, you do that. When Paul was knocked down yes. and he was blind, uh -huh. what I'm saying to you is this. Yes. That commandment that God gave over in Matthew 23, uh -huh. he was not authorized to change that. 
Did God ever say in the book of Matthew that man cannot be called pastor? He didn't say man. He said it in Matthew 23. He did? No, he didn't. The word is brilliant as you are, brother. Matthew. Just a minute. You want to tell me that you don't Matthew. Just, just, let's read it. Matthew chapter let's read 23. It. Let's read it. Matthew 23. You can't breath. add. You can't take away. I'm strong. Let's read it. Matthew 23. We're at verse 8. Says what? But be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ. Be ye not called rabbi. Rabbi mean teacher. Right. For one is your master, even Christ. And all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth. Yes. For one is your father. Who which, is it? Which is in heaven. Now, you got a son? Finish reading. Finish reading. Neither be ye called masters. Yes. For one is your master, even Christ. I'm not, nobody called me master. No, they don't. Do any of y'all call me master? No. Do any of y'all call me master? No. Yes. And he gave some apostles. Do you call him, do you call him pastor? Yes. Yes. Pastors. No, let's let's read the Bible. Back in Ephesians chapter four. Give, let's get Bible. Seven. Just a minute. The Bible gonna contradict your arm strong. Just, just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Arm strong here. Here now. Arm strong here. I'm telling you, hell waits for you. Here the Bible. And he gave some apostles. Either you're gonna conduct yourself right. Either you're gonna conduct yourself right. Either you're gonna conduct. Do you believe the Bible? Just a minute. Do you believe the Bible? Do you believe the Bible? And he gave some apostles. Do you believe the Bible? Armstrong. Armstrong. Do you believe the Bible? Armstrong. Armstrong. You said you was a preacher. Do you believe the Bible? And he gave some apostles. Listen. And he gave some apostles. What else? And some prophets. What else? And some evangelists. What else? And some pastors. Spell it. P A S T O R S. Spell it again. P A S T O R S. Spell it again. P A S T O R S. Spell it again. P A S T O R S. All right, let us all stand. Listen, I'm strong. Repent of your sins and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Your doctrine, your doctrine is damnable, Armstrong. What you need to do, what you need to do is sit under Pastor Jennings and let me teach you. All right? All right, we're going to get, we're going to ask Elder, Elder Ben to close us out with prayer. All right, that's, that's enough, that's enough, Armstrong. That's enough. That's right, be quiet right now. Be quiet now. Be quiet now. That's enough. Be quiet. All right, you be quiet. Let us all stand. We're ready to have prayer. A preacher should know how to conduct himself. Don't say nothing, Armstrong. We're ready to have prayer. We're ready to have prayer, Armstrong. Go ahead, Brother Ben. Go ahead. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this service, the fellowship tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, we thank you for the word that came forth today, Lord God. We thank you for the souls that are going down in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for, you know, you was filling with the gift of the Holy Ghost, God. We yes, ask you, God, to bless the ones that came out from highways, on the, uh, from the dangerous highways and byways. Lord, we thank you, God, for all you have done, Lord God. We thank you, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for healing the bodies and healing the mind. And thank you for the word tonight, God. We bring the forces of hell to come against us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bind it in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, we give you honor, we give you glory. We give you glory. If we lift up your holy name, we'll be here tonight. In the name of Holy Ghost, we in the name of Jesus Christ. We praise you, we magnify you, we glorify you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, back at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Don't go to your church, don't do that. Come on, back tomorrow morning.